we're going to have a chat here with our good friend Luke Kelly of The World is Quiet Here, Zelophilia, and most importantly, obviously, Antarctica fame. Who? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. you've Tom Tom Noid. Tom Noid. Can we talk can we talk <laughs> Yeah. Can we talk can we talk about Tom Noid for a second? Can you tell can you tell sure. our listeners about Tom Noid? Sure. Where, where do you want to Where do you want to start? Where do you want to know? So, how where did you get that moniker? So, for our listeners, Luke, I know Luke from way back in the day. He had a band called Borium, and uh, his moniker, his uh, his stage name, Nom de Plume, was Tom Noid at that time. So, where did where did you get that moniker? I just have to know. Um. So, and I was really in the phase of actually, you know, that happened to be during the time where. When MySpace was still a thing, and you only were limited to doing four tracks. So you make a band profile, and you're limited to do four tracks. So essentially, you were only able to upload an EP's worth of music. So I was making artist names for the different projects I had. So there'll be like a, there'll be like one hardcore metal death deathcore project. Um, I had something called like I forget what it was. It was like Dime Street Carnival Band. So that was one other project. And then one of them was, I just wanted to do a solo project. It was kind of more like weird, jazzy uh, Tom Waits ripoff. And I decided to just go with uh, that project. But the, the name that I got for that was I, in our hometown, they had an art exhibit of just local artists. And one of the sculptors there was named Frank Noid. I probably got his name wrong because it's been that long ago. And it was just this very bizarre looking... I was like mutated fish sculptures. I it would be really hard to describe, but I had never heard that name Noid. So, and I was listening to Tom Waits at the time, so I just threw Tom at the for the first name. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you for answering that question. I, that, that's been that's been a burning question for like two decades. Okay, so basically, I was just trying to steal other people's identities as as my new artist identity. So, you know, very very apt Amazing. for the rest of my life. So, your your first band was what then? My first band? Yeah, what was your first band? Uh, where, did, where did you like get your musical start? Like, where did you, like, where, where did you like? What got you into music initially? You've been having like musical diarrhea for years. You've yeah. been spewing shit. Yeah, you've out really, in, you've been, been enjoying quite a uh, a resurgence of renaissance. I want to say of just yeah, renaissance man of <laughs> creativity <laughs> in the last like five years specifically with your your solo project and your voice acting stuff and. You have done, yeah. You've done so many different projects recently. So, what, what was your, what, what is the start of your musical journey? Like, what got you into playing music? Oh, um, I didn't even think about that for a while. Uh, I guess I would say that actually, really, I just want to get into music to be like my brother. Uh, he just got a guitar. You remember? I remember he got a Jackson Dinky guitar. Um, I thought that Shredder. was the coolest. Huh? Shredder. Yep. So I thought that was just the coolest fucking guitar ever. And I just wanted to play guitar just like my brother, but then I realized, oh, you know, finally diverging my identity from my brother. I actually liked music as it was and trying to teach myself how to how to play and kind of stumble along through it, just like how everyone else does in their musical careers. Just start as a, you know, 10-year-old, 12-year-old kid, right. somewhere around there. Um, I, I forget which band came first. I think my very first band, when I was like... 13, 14, it was like a, it was a metal band called Overshadowed, we were, we're all in high school, um, Overshadowed, like Overshadowed, which I don't, that sounds like a, a, a Shadows Fall, <laughs> what it sounds like to me, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what, I think that was actually one of the bands that we listened, that uh, the bassist and drummer listened to, so we Clearly. were, we were, th yeah, we were three piece, I guess it was a very odd mix of trying to combine our influence, like, so, I'm trying to remember. Like the drummer was really into Lamb of God, uh, Macedon, Slayer, old Metallica. The bassist was definitely more jazz influenced. He definitely loved uh, Black Sabbath. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Um, I can <laughs> I can definitely Primus. see that. That's funny. You said, dude, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, and Primus. If you're from California and Primus is not part of your journey, I feel sorry for you. But. Yeah, <laughs> Weird Al Yankovic is that's funny because he's actually a pretty big part of my musical journey, at least from oh, really? like my childhood. Yeah, for sure. Like, I really, mm -hmm. um, 
there's something about his music that I, I gravitated towards as like a really silly like class count clown kind of kid at the time I was like really yeah. I was like trying to be funny too is the thing I, I knew I was funny uh-huh. and I was trying to be funny and I was trying to be funnier and I really sort of gravitated towards that kind of that kind of stupid shit <laughs> I'm gonna step in here I'm gonna step in here and say I sold less clay pool weed in 2015 boom that's it wow that's I want to say that's, that's Levi's biggest claim to fame. He was a huge germaphobe. I shook his hand once. He wiped his hands, was very upset, and then I was so happy I shook his hand again, and he got very upset that I shook his hand a second time, and that was about it. It was very awkward, but he bought my weed, and that was it. So, <laughs> did you like fanboy oh out on Gushman? I did, and he was not very happy about it. He was just like, "Stop shaking my hand, please," <laughs> like that kind of thing. That was, it was good. It was a great time. We're friends now. So you should have you should have said, "I love your work on at the pump house or, or behind the pump house." <laughs> That's his book. He would have appreciated I know, I, that. Okay. Honestly, I I, 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 I fanboyed. I gushed. I, I, I basically, I, I'm pretty sure I just shook his hand and just named albums of Primus at him. <laughs> that's that so funny. Thing, you know? so, yeah. Out. I, I, that's, I can definitely see, I can see Primus and Bungle coming through your music in like a, a big fucking way. Holy and fuck, the, the playfulness, the uh, the humor, the, uh, the, this, the sardonic, is sardonicness a word? Is sardonicness a word? I don't know. It is now. Sar- sardonicism? <laughs> <laughs> to the sardonic tinge. I'm so, so shall ignorant. We say. I'm just going to believe it right now. It's like, yep, that's, that sounds good. <laughs> I don't know enough about sardonic to dispute that. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, dude, um, uh, Luke. Um, so, uh, oh well, well, you know, I'm sorry. Before, yeah, I, ahead, before I forget ahead, this, so can, can I just ask you more about your brother? So, what? Your, your, you said that your brother was a musician. Well, did he play in any yep. bands that we that we've heard of? Or? Um, let's see. I don't. I don't think it'll be anything a math core index would have uh, covered. So I'm trying. He been, like any like local because Ukiah is just so full of death metal bands that I you know I feel like I may may know that <laughs> Ukiah has definitely not a whole lot of death metal going on. It's uh, it's got some metal going on, but not death metal. The um, only bands I know out of fucking Ukiah are death metal bands. So maybe it's really maybe it's not my, that's my bias, perhaps. Luke, we're uh, not well, giving you address out, but uh, are you still in <laughs> Ukiah right now? No, nope. he lives in Los Angeles now. Oh God. Okay, thank God. Right? No, I, no, it's it's uh. I'll say it, since it's a big enough city, it's uh, Sacramento. Oh, okay. Oh, right. homie, you're closer to us than you. I mean, just good Fuck. you're out of Ukiah. Just, just fucking yeah. move on. Fuck, we there. need to kick it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I thought you were in L.A. Nope. Um, so anyway, you're, 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 your brother, though. So your brother was a guitarist in, yep. in a metal band, or? No, nah, it was all all punk or hard bands. I'm just trying to go in chronological order what bands he was in. Um so bright white noise I, there's gonna be a lot of bands that it's, they're like locally famous like if you were friends with them like oh yeah i remember totally. that band but if you're if you're like 15 minutes outside of ukiah you probably haven't heard of them legendary but, uh, local bands is what i like legendary to call them. Local, yep. yes like yes, bands right. that just like mean so fucking much to some people on like a level that you can almost not even understand unless you've had a really close friend and a very like important local band yep Yep, yep, yep. When, when you're that, when you're like one degree of separation away from it, it's the 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 importance on it, especially when you're in a small town, like is just is so magnified. Absolutely. Am I wrong? I mean, like, no, you're I not feel like wrong. In, I know, I know, you can't yeah. see me because I don't have a camera on, but no, I'm I'm sh- I'm <laughs> nodding my head violently. <laughs> cool. Yeah, man. I I feel like Ukiah, just like Northern California, is just full of those microcosms left and right. Like, you can go to any small town in California and find an area where there's like a legendary local band that like nobody's heard of and you can't even find their music online I believe anymore, but... we call that a scene Christian <laughs> we do <laughs> yes, yes, yes and we, you know before that the internet documentation you know in less less stuff is like available to listen to obviously so anyway um, what was I going to ask you so you started probably going to shows really early then what was your first show Oh jeez! Um, your first like heavy? What was like your first like heavy like metal or punk show? I think I don't even remember what it was. It was at a school. It was outside. There were I was like eight years old or something like that, and there were the intimidating teenagers, tim- <laughs> you know, the the <laughs> punk rock looking teenagers mm-hmm. walking around, and uh, that's when you cross the street be- to the other side. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, yeah, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what, what it was. It was just, yeah, I just remember it was punk music, and I just remember that my, my chest was shaking from the from the kick drum. And uh, so I, I thought that was, oh, wow, this is so exciting. I'm almost scared. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, to feel and it on uh, such a like, molecular level is, is mm-hmm. like, life-changing for sure. Yeah, um, I'm tr- 
God, jeez. I'm trying to... Now I'm trying to think of a band or a show that I've seen where it was a band that I remember. And can put, I really wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm sorry. I'm just absolutely drawing a blank. So that this, Appreciate your honesty there, Can man. I tell you my first heavy show, Luke? <laughs> what What now? Can I tell you my first heavy show? Go ahead. Skillet. Skillet? I saw Skillet. They are a, church. A, they are a religious uh, metal band, and they have gotten more and more worse through the years. Yeah, it's just yeah. Fucking... It's like it was like it's like trapped before trapped existed. Yep. They're like they're like the original trapped. They're like wow. they're like if trapped and Hoobastank like man that co- might be collaborated a... like twenty years ago, skillet thirty might, years ago. Skillet might be a husband and a wife thing these days. I think like the, the wife's involved and stuff like just kind of like a I have a skillet shirt somewhere. It's like I, it's, I have a skillet <laughs> baseball tee somewhere. That I I've bought never at that seen show. it. I've never seen it, dude. Because it's probably in storage. I need to bust that out and sell it online. It's probably worth two hundred dollars or something. No, you need to bust out your ball oh, chain geez. necklace and put those both on again. Fucking, let's get <laughs> no back one wants this shit. No, let's do no this. one wants five years of fucking my dead skin and sweat. <laughs> oh, ball chain necklace. Yeah, no, dog. I just what you took me right back to my childhood too. Yeah, you used to wear those too. You you mm-hmm. had like the whole getup for the uh, the Tom Noid character. You had like the lab jacket and like the like the, the yeah, mad that, that, scientist that was like. Yeah, that was that was post uh, uh, ball train. Okay, that was post ball train. <laughs> totally, that's fair. Yo, um, uh, those two outfits don't jive. Do you have nope. any questions about just his current? Oh product? yeah, of course. We're, we're getting there. Oh, uh, don't worry, because I have a uh, yeah. I just okay, like, cool. I want to yeah. Don't worry. So moving this right along, because Levi's getting impatient, I can. I, I just want to talk sense about it. your. I want to talk about your new shit, man. It's so fucking good. I man. just wanted to get for our listeners just to get into his background really quickly. So yeah. So we're really here to talk about your work with The World is Quiet here. You guys just dropped this album, Zon. We covered it. Via Silent Pendulum. Yeah, we covered it a few podcasts ago. Uh, One of my favorite records of the year so far. Really fantastic progressive metal that's just bringing me back to the glory days of Cimmery. And I say that in the most positive way. So how did you end up meeting with them? Like, how did how did you... That uh, takes my question away. How uh, did that happen? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. How did you end up linking up with these guys? Um, so the guitarist, uh, Isaac, you know, I feel bad because we also, uh, Isaac and I re- semi-recently had this conversation about like, how did we meet again? And I, I, I don't even remember. It was like as if we were always friends on the internet at some point. Love that. Uh, but <laughs> it's like, are you going to go back eight years on a chat and try to figure it out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure how it came to be. I think Isaac found my music somewhere in some weird progressive metal progressive rock reddit thing and i'm sure after i get off this podcast and talk to him he's gonna quickly correct me uh but anyway uh he's anyway so he found my music somewhere and then reached out to me through the band camp um on band camp and then uh, we were just like facebook friends and then he and then uh I, he does this thing called riffified which i don't know if you riffified. guys have already yeah that's I, I see I, yeah so he takes so it basically takes um, it basically internet memes as video memes and then just creates the most like chaotic um, metal around it like to every so say if someone's talking he would create a whole metal song to that person talking and, and like every single moment would match up exactly to the syllable but it's like every like half second is like I don't know it's just emotionally charged madness and I don't Para, know how parametric par, par, I think parametric is the word to describe that parametric I think so maybe I'm wrong okay. But yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because I've seen many videos of jazz drummers doing it to like it's always sunny clips. Yep, and that's yep, endless, yep. endlessly yeah, dude, entertaining. Yes, dude. Yep. So it's like that, except it's uh, progressive death metal, and it's fully produced. And I have no idea how he does it. It's kind of like the that weird mix between the, as you know progressive death metal, but also kind of the same uh, approach as like you know the old Looney Tunes music compositions, where like every single moment is jam. Like the music is following every single uh, movement of this show every every bing bam boom the sound that there is or if you get run over by a car or if there's uh you get dropped on by an by an acme uh <laughs> safe so anyway it's kind of like that but just just mind-bogglingly uh, absurd the way he does it so anyway all right so he wish that's a really long winded way yes that's a very cool. long winded way to say we met on the internet as Love all it. good friendships that start and then uh, we were just friends for many years later. Uh, well, not many years later. We were friends for many years up until um, we were talking about the album, uh, Zon. And so what happened was, uh, for one reason or another, their 
their uh, vocalist was no longer in the band. So they just posted online saying, hey, we're looking for a vocalist, and no one uh, said anything yet. So I was just asking curiously, hey, did anyone, uh, did anyone, uh, anyone check in with you guys? Did anyone, you know, audition or anything to get, you get any nibbles? And he's like, oh, well, no, but, uh, since you're asking, uh, you, you want to be part of this record? <laughs> and I didn't mean to be, I was just asking, <laughs> just asking uh, sincerely, curiously, hey, did anyone reach out to you guys yet? So that, that's how I got started. That's how I got part of Zon. That's the very short version. Um, we, we talked about this like two episodes ago when we covered you and everything like that, but uh, I gotta say, man, you really um, you really have fun with your vocals, like that just boom, chip, boom, chip. The ad-libbing at the beginning yeah, yeah. of um, <laughs> the Helix, whatever it is, yeah, that's fucking, that was really good. Like, what, what, like, <laughs> specific, perfect timing specifically, for that. Specifically, like, what... Like, I, I'm going to call that almost like a filler in a way, like in a funky filler way. Like, what made you do that? Yeah, was that was that just like, was that spontaneous? Or, yeah, it was like a joke, like playing? an inside joke or like what? Like, because like, it, it, it works. It works so well. And like, if you do listen to it, you're like, motherfuckers just going boom, but you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, sort of sort of arrhythmically rather. Not, it's not really to like the tempo of whatever is happening on the music. It's like you're vibing yourself, you know, unless you're creating a polyrhythm and I'm just like not savvy, but <laughs> Uh, well, funny. The funny thing is, the, all the layers except for that boom chaka bow wow part is uh, Isaac. Actually, he um, we were going back and forth between. Well, not just Isaac, it's the whole band. But we were going back and forth, and Isaac suggested sometimes it would send little audio clips. I'm like, okay, so for this section, can we do some X, Y, and Z? And he would send like in a Reaper session, you know, a list of his little. Uh, how would you say it? Little overdubs of the different sound effects. So basically, mm-hmm. I was just repeating what he was giving me in that moment. But the only thing that I added was the thing that you guys commented on was just the boom chaka bow wow. And okay. I, I don't know. I just felt like I just I don't know. I just thought I'm really surprised that anyone decided to comment on it because I thought it was something it was going to be one of those things that no one would even listen to or would even know. No, it's so it's it's over so quickly. It's like sort of just like this minor detail, but like it's so like whimsical and playful that it really sticks with you. I, think. I mean, like you can listen to a you can listen to a song, right? But are you really listening to it? But like it's like it, 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 like uh, I listened to it and like I the second time through, I was like, what the fuck? Wait a second. I was like, is he just going boom, check a wow, wow? Like, what the fuck is shit, dude? That's that's brilliant. You yeah, know? I'd like, like to think that we challenge each other to like listen to the songs um, like a different level to where you you pick up on subtleties like that, or to the point where that you're able to comment on it. You know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in this case, I feel like it definitely it adds quite a bit to the beginning of that track. It's so like, it's such a like light humor to like the the banger that's about to happen, you know, like through the whole rest of the fucking album, it's right? Like, you know, that kind of thing. Anyways. So, did you compose your your vocal parts, or was it a collaborative process, or how how did that work? Did you like write the lyrics, or did you both write the lyrics? Um, so the vocal melodies, the actual vocal parts, that's very collaborative. There's some part. So the lyrics, I didn't I didn't have a hand in it. The uh, thank thank God that I would not have been able to. Uh, not been able to come up with that concept or be able to put together the lyrics to fit that story that they were telling, the magnum opus that is Zon for the mm. whole concept. So thankfully, uh, the the boys, uh, I think it's mostly Tyler and Ethan, uh, they wrote the lyrics for that. And That's uh, nice were, when somebody has a strong vision behind the project. Um, yeah. Can I uh, ask you, um, like, as far as when myself, like, you know, uh, just not being in many bands and everything like that like with when this is happening um do they suggest like how you're presenting it like you know like in the song or are they giving you the dumping you with the lyrics and be like all right fit it into the song it's it's very much a mix so it's, it's yes to everything you just asked um so what happened was i really love this process is especially since it was had to be done remotely is that they set up a google doc and they put down the lyrics and then in the Google Doc, they would, you know, write their notes, you know, hey, this is Isaac here. I think it'd be good if we did death metal. Oh my God, what here. a fucking nightmare. <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck, really? It is, so to you guys, it might seem like a nightmare, but for, for all of us, I was like the only, it seemed like the best possible way to go about it because it kept everyone on, well, literally the same page, the same Google Doc, uh, so to speak. But, you know, sometimes, in some parts, they would say, you know, do whatever you want here. Other parts would say, I would really like to hear a melody here. Sometimes they would record the parts that they were thinking for certain melodies for specific oh, lyrics and send it over. Good. Okay. And, uh, and other parts. But there was also, I, I won't be able to tell you the percentage of how much of it was suggested. What other half was, do whatever you want. But I would say it's like roughly, I would say like 40%, we want to hear it this way. 60%, do whatever you want. And, um, 
you know, it was it made for a great collaboration because even after I record my part, it would spark another idea for them. Like, oh, you know, I really like the uh, the triplet sort of feel that you did here, uh, but how about we do it like a tad bit faster or. Or instead of death metal growls here, let's do the now the, the hardcore shouts or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, hope amazing. Wow, you really you uh, so um, ultimately like uh, very twenty first century album. Like how this how the how the recording went through the al uh, for the album. Um, I take it the band recorded everything, and did you record remotely yeah. somewhere else and then bring that? Yeah. Or? Yep. Um, yeah? Just, that's yeah, exactly yeah. right. They recorded everything themselves, and then I had it moved. Which mixed answers my over. next question. Yeah, and so well, they record so, everything so, themselves. So, um, oh, go ahead. I, mean, I, 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 I take it, Luke, you just did it yourself, like by like in in your place, or did you go to a studio? Because I mean, naturally, you're already making your Good own question. music forever. So, it's, um, so that is at the time I was at a duplex with thin walls, so I couldn't really. Maybe I could do boom, just got bows in there, but I couldn't really do ah. In the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I get self-conscious, you know. You gotta yeah. be. I have to have soundproofing. I can't like do metal vocals in an apartment. Yeah. So at, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that either. So what I end up doing is taking a laptop and recording the backseat of my car behind a bush before my <laughs> ship. <broke. laughs> That's amazing. You know who else has that Closet, same? Closeted vocalist, just the, trying to figure it out, you the know? The Central like, has that same process. They, like, record vocals in their car. They just go park, like, in a public space somewhere where they can just, like, be loud. I love that. That is, that's so funny. It's It was, honestly, it was the only option I had. <laughs> it was... Totally. So, recording you, we, vocals we, sitting down is not fucking easy, by the way. Let's be honest, it, everybody. Nope. No matter what in the scene, playing shows, trying to practice in a band or do whatever, rentals... Fucking suck. So you heard it here first. <laughs> the vocals to Zahn were recorded sitting down. <laughs> yep. You need to fucking do better if you can't fucking record vocals that good standing up. Yep. <laughs> Damn, dog, you're fucking savage. That's incredible, Luke. Honestly, like to be able to pull off that kind of style that consistently with such versatility sitting the fuck down, dog, like that's incredible. You're, uh, Luke, I, you. I do want to say though, like, um, we, I mentioned this, like, in the uh, two podcasts ago when we covered you, but uh, the registry of your vocals not only is impressive and like um, considering that the lowest you had like the lowest like contra bass speaking yeah. voice, you know. I mean, just I mean, literally hearing your voice like speaking wise, it's blowing my mind. But uh, I just um, I want to say that like you, the way that your register works with this music, it's truly through this whole album. I'm just thoroughly impressed with the vocal approach. Slash, I feel like you're just having fun the whole time. Where I'm like, is this guy like just like joking around in a way? Like, I mean, the the, the I mean, you have a very you're very talented with your range and everything like that. I just feel like sometimes like like with this album, were there points other than that boom chicka wow wow kind of thing like that you're just having fun, quote unquote? You know. <laughs> well, thank thank you very much. Um, yeah, <laughs> there were some parts where I just decided. I, know, I figured because the album was so... I, I gotta be honest, with all the albums I, I ever did by myself, they were never to this length. So this is a lot of just content that we had to, that I had to do. And I'm of the opinion that if you only have one vocalist and the longer the music is, that means that's one voice you're gonna... That's one voice you're gonna be have to listen to even longer. So it's the monotony... That. So it's going to be even more monotonous. So I feel like it, I had no choice but to put in as much variety as I could to not make it boring and and ruin all their good work. <laughs> so I, that's why I was trying to... How benevolent. <laughs> trying to do everything I could to uh, throw all the ideas at the wall and um, well, get the guys as the approval. Album, so good job. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, <laughs> we're talking to you for a second. It's, a, it's, yeah. it's okay. You, know, you, did a, you did an okay job. <laughs> oh, I it's, it's a bang-up job. You know, It's, it's passable. But dude, uh, yeah, uh, 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 thank you for answering that. It just, um, it, I'm truly blown away by your register and everything. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. In all seriousness, fucking yeah. really, really excellent work on that album. Definitely, really enjoying it. Thank you. I will throw this in there. There's actually been a lot of times where the guy, I thought I was being too ridiculous. They asked me to go a little further. <laughs> See, that's what's up, dude. That's amazing. Yeah, that's how you know you're you're doing good work. <laughs> That being said, are there any plans for live shows in the future with The World is Quiet here? You guys going to set up some gigs? or? Um, at the immediate moment, no, uh, especially with just how the band is set up where we're kind of all desperate. Uh, desperate? Desperate? I can't. 
I've seen the word red. Disparate. Never... <laughs> Disparate is the word. Yeah, for Disparate. sure. Disparate. Thank you. Disparate. I don't know how. I don't know how English works. Thank you. Um, so I, I don't know either. Yeah. So what are we're, taxes? We're all... What's a mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand the economy? Anyway. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it will probably take a while before we actually get together for anything. So right now, um, the most right now the band only exists online, and uh, but uh, maybe I don't know. Who knows if that will change in the future? I, it would be, I'm, you know, I say it right now. It would be criminal if this shit never got performed live. Like mm-hmm. the world is quiet here. You guys need to book a tour that is convenient for Luke. How <laughs> this? And then you take this shit on the road. Luke, I'll meet you in the middle. Let's give give us a music video. At Math Corey next will sponsor the tour. <laughs> <laughs> sponsor as far as just you know, putting putting my logo on the flyer. I will yeah. send you the lo- I will send you the the PNG of my logo and you will put it on the flyer. <laughs> okay. And then I will share the flyer. <laughs> Sick man, this is fucking shit, dude. I can't give you any money. <laughs> but yo, um, uh, but uh, ultimately, um, if, if if said situation would happen, I mean, um, are you ready to like do live? I mean, like most of your projects, I feel like have been just you know, you know. That is an excellent question. You know, like from from your desk. You know, when so, was the last time that you you played a gig? To just sort of add on that. I don't even remember. It was definitely years. You son of a um, bitch. My last gig was 2009 20. with Antarctica, so. God, I think. I think I might be right there with you. Played. That. You played. Yeah, that was. Was our last. That was our last show? Was the Antarctica <laughs> show in Ukiah? That was like one of the best shows I've ever played, by the way. I mean, not maybe yeah. performance wise, but in terms of like headcount, like gross number of people through the door. Luke, mm-hmm. were you bass for Antarctica? Yep. Yeah. Dating ourselves here. Dating, Love it. dating myself, rather. <laughs> Just talking about your your other projects. What's up with uh, Zelophilia? Do you have anything in the works with Zelophilia? I know you you put out that one really great album, Lust, Loathing, and Love, which is fucking fantastic. If you're not familiar with that, if you're a fan of Bungle, Dillinger, Locust, Mashuga, definitely take some time to go back and listen to that, and you'll start to see where some of these chops are coming from. Oh, I just looked, Luke. I just looked this up. Uh, it's the only thing you ever. Uh, dropped on that. I remember this album specifically. Holy fucking shit, dude! Yeah, I would love to hear a follow up to that project. If you've if you've got any more songs in the bank on that, you should absolutely publish them. The, thank you. I, I I really appreciate that. I was I uh, even though it's definitely a long time ago, I remember pouring my soul into that one. Um, although I think part of it now is that because so much time has passed, I always get little fe- I always get some fear that there'll be the uh, the the sophomore sophomore album curse, especially after what more than a decade later. Slump. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's like the necro necrophag or necrophagist thing. You know, it's like there's such a a massive expectation. Sorry, we're having some random noise in the background there. There's <laughs> such like a, a massive, ac- but then again, you're not like you're not Mohammed Shemez. I don't think there's like you know twenty thousand people sitting eagerly waiting on the next Elephilia album. No, but no, no, not at all. But I, but all all three of those people, I I don't want to <laughs> let them down. You don't want to let me and Levi down, basically. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> but if but if you want it, I, I I guess I'll just make it just for you. I won't even make it public. I'll just make a selfie album just for for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You're a sweetheart. That's, that's oh, classy. Nice. Would love to hear more Zelophilia. I won't linger too much on that because it sounds like it's it's a bit dormant at the at the time. But yeah, I, I would love to hear a follow up to that because that was that was fucking fantastic. Uh, I I know you've been doing a lot of voice acting lately. Uh, is, is there any project that you want to you want to plug there oh uh, no because there's no project to, to plug uh, oh really um, that's a crime I really feel like you should be getting into that like as a profession I, I've been trying to pursue it but I feel like you are far more equipped oh shucks look just what yeah I am uh, yeah, I haven't really gotten back into it. I just remember trying to get into it years ago and um, I think at least the avenues I was ch- trying to go through like the um Places like I don't know if you heard of Voices.com or Voices One Voice One Two Three dot com. Those are basically uh, yeah, they're they're voiceover uh, websites where because it has such a high demand, you ac- essentially you have to pay to play, and okay. that puts you on the less stone to actually get paying gigs. And uh, I realized that was not for me because basically, again, you're competing with the entire world over the internet, so it's not the same thing as finding that one cool project that's local. Mm-hmm. And then making right. a relationship from you're, there. You're paying to compete with the world. That doesn't make much sense. Yeah. So anyway, well, that well, back when in my early twenties, I thought that was the only way to go about it. And then I, and then I stopped from there. So I've, there's only been a couple um, voice 
acting gigs that I've done. Uh, ironically, sort of, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, please finish your thought. Oh no! All I was gonna say, I think, I, ironically, the only consistent voiceover work is for their web comic is called Isla Akate. I S L A. Isla Akate. Yeah. So it. it so this is gonna be a, a weird switch of fan bases here. Uh, so it's it's a furry web comic. It's. Okay. Uh, so it's about uh, it's about these uh, aliens from this aquatic aquatic planet and they every once in a while they are web comics because they have their following over there they have what they do it's called animatics it's essentially it's like think of like moving sketches almost like you know in the 90s when you saw uh, Disney movies where before the movie was finished the, tr the teaser was partly the unfinished sketches that laid up to the scene so think of so think of that but that's you know that's the video you have music and, and voiceovers over this uh the sketched animatic, so it's like moving, you know, kind of like a moving uh, web comic. Okay, so wait. like, uh, like Newgrounds. <laughs> that's that's the closest point of reference I can come up with off the top of my head. Wait, so you wait, wait, Luke, Luke, wait, it's furry. So we're talking like, like you basically did voiceover for like a sexual like comic. It's not. It's not it's inherently. Come on. No, it's, it's not inherently. It nope. It's it's the PG rated version. Not that. Not that kind of furry. It's it's oh. the family friendly furries. Which oh, I know like is hard to believe. Like, like foxtails on the on their butts and everything like that. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. Nobody's dry humping everybody. Things nope. like that. Not not everything is grooming. <laughs> so so you started. Joke. So the reason the reason I asked that is because you've been doing. I feel like there's sort of an element of voice acting to some of the projects that you've done. Like you've recorded. You've like recruited people to. You know, like a large group of people to openly collaborate, just like with like random mouth noises and shit as well. That was when I just got lazy and didn't want to. Uh, Open up a new pro, new Bandcamp account under a different name, so I just threw that under the Lou Kelly moniker. Except I just added and friends. And um, friends, so, okay. Yeah. What are your some of, like some of your biggest vocal influences going into recording this album? Like, what were you what were you sort of drawing on for? You know, what were you what were you like kind of like channeling, if anything? Um, let's see. I don't really like, do you have, have any like big inspirations. Yeah, but I, unfortunately, it's more. I'm just mostly just drawn to certain techniques rather than thinking of people, uh, but well, especially when it comes to death metal uh, growls. Honestly, I don't really have any specific point of reference for death metal vocals. Just kind of being around that sort of environment where you're surrounded by death metal all the time when you're playing shows and going to the scenes is just sort of part of the. It's just it's part of the water you drink. <laughs> so right. Um, so I don't really have any specific reference for that. Uh, for the weird vocals, as hard as I try now to try to shirk the influences from it, I can't because it's part of me now, is uh, definitely Tom Waits and definitely Mike yeah. Patton. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, the, 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 the that's a with Mike Patton. Yeah, the Pattonisms are abundant and yeah. very clear with, and, with and, your, your stuff. And, and to be clear, you know, I, still, I still cherish that. I will never talk down to them. It's just that there was a there was a period of like a decade where I was actively trying to sound like Mike Patton and Tom Waits that now I'm at the point like, okay, that's, that's enough. <laughs> we, we can, <laughs> we, they already exist in the world. We don't, we, we don't need any more of that. <laughs> so right. trying to do something a little different, but that's still, I, I was about to say that I feel like you have a very unique voice and I feel like that's, that's the best thing in the scene is to not, or rather as, as a vocalist trying to imitate another vocalist sound is like the, one of the worst things that you can do. You need to find your voice, especially with screaming. It's like, Everyone has a very different instrument, and trying to like replicate the sound that somebody else just sort of like naturally makes isn't always mm -hmm. going to be like the healthiest thing for you. You have to find a way to correctly mm -hmm. vocal fry, or um, you know, tunnel throat, or whatever, no, whatever fucking absolutely. technique. Yeah, um, yeah. Luke, uh, going going on, cord. Uh, going on your voice and everything. I do want to know, like, uh, at at what age did your like w when did you change to this register? Like, you know, like, I mean, were you in high school, like middle school, like with this low voice? Because like, it, I mean, I'm uh, Christian has uh, headphones on right now and I'm listening through his headphones in a way. And like the I'm like almost like third person, like listening to you right now. <laughs> we're shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> but like, but like the monitoring situation, is the, the register better. is like so ridiculously low. I just like I'm, I'm blown away. Like, this is what how you speak. In other words, he's able to hear you without even wearing headphones. Yeah. And like, I mean, just like it's so <laughs> pronounced, you know, and like when I hear the, the when I hear the, the, the this last record, you know, 
I'm like, this motherfucker's like going deep. He's having fun. But then when I hear you, I'm like, oh my God, this guy just, this is, this is the voice, you know, that kind of thing where, um, I'm just blown away by it. So like, when did you, when did you get this, bo- the, this register? Yeah. When did you the know? contrabass start coming out? Well, thank you. Is, that, um, is that how would you carry, is that was how, is that how you would characterize your range? By the um, way? I think there was definitely a period of time where I was actively trying to make my voice sound deeper. So I would, I would, for sure. was a word, um, strive for it to be it. called a contrabass. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So I, so thank you. I'm really honored by that. Um, yeah, I would probably say at least a baritone, bass baritone, somewhere around there. Um, but thank you. Uh, the, I'm trying to remember. It, it was very gradual. I just remember that people who knew me from high school didn't start commenting to my voice until maybe I was like 19, 20, said, hey, your voice is different. Um, but I didn't notice it because the, the change was so gradual. Um, but no, I... The same shit happened. I, I had a pretty... Actually, I... Well, Christian, you remember, I had a pretty high voice. And we went, well... Which it I was, remember. You sounded... You sounded different. I met you when you were like fucking eight or 18 or 19, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, you were like a... You were a... You had just graduated high school, I think. Yeah, I think... I think so. So, um... I wouldn't was be like able to... tell 15 years ago, so... Yeah, I... So, I, th- I don't think it was until the... My early 20s that... You know, the light, I'm sorry, you, you can't see my face, but that's because I'm actively searching for my memories, and I just cannot, f- for the life of me, pinpoint when it actually got to this point. <laughs> I think this was okay. a very right. slow burn. Slow but I mean, burner. like, at some point, somebody, like, did, I mean, some point, did somebody just be like, yo, like, what's up with your voice? And you were like, oh, <laughs> the, I mean, like, at some point, did you realize that you had this, like, lower register, or, or were you, like along the way, you're like, oh, my, you know, that kind of thing, you know, or at some point, like, someday, somebody was like, yo, What's up with your voice? And you're like, oh, oh, gotta look back on this. Like, oh shit, my voice is low. But that kind of thing. Yeah, I, yep, definitely was. Um, especially when I was working at a, a cashier at a dollar store. A lot of people will comment on it. Um, I think it was like 21, 22 around the time, I think. Wow. Start getting those middle aged, middle aged ladies. Mm, like, those <laughs> eyebrows raised. Mm, what's going on? How here? did you know? <laughs> because uh, the same shit happened. Yeah, 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 we know. Yeah, like, <laughs> we got stories of Christian over here, so it's all good. <laughs> X nay on the stories day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, it just, uh, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, just uh, to, uh, to hear the voice and everything and just like be like, oh my god, fucking, yeah, this is what Luke fucking sounds like. Holy shit. Yeah, that's true. Oh, so. But- I, I do want. I, I, I did bring this up earlier without uh, us like recording and stuff, but uh, I do want to say like I look up Luke Kelly, right? People, how do we find Luke Kelly out there? Luke, tell us. Uh, if I would say the best way is if you're going on Bandcamp, it's Lou Kelly. And that's L O U. Exactly. That's how I more mostly know you as is Lou Kelly. Mm-hmm. You know, if you say my name fast anyway, it sounds like Lou Kelly anyway. Luke Kelly. Right, Lou exactly. Kelly. That's that's yeah. the brilliance of it. Yeah, so to clear up any confusion again, we're referring to Luke by his, his given name, but the moniker that you can find him Lou. on Bandcamp yes. is Lou Kelly. And of course, it's uh, it's helpful because it's a bit of a, um, a portmanteau as well. How about you go on, on any site right now and look up Luke Kelly? And you will have a fucking shit show that is not any of our. Uh, in, it's not us, Lou, or our Lou right now that we're talking to. So we, we got the real, we got the real Luke Kelly on the line right now. So my <laughs> next question to you is: I, It would be a shame to have that voice be wasted. Do you have any other like projects in the line? Would you be open to like you know going on tour with another band? Because you should be really like making a profession. I mean, if assuming that you were you know interested in doing it. You could easily make a profession out of being like a fill-in vocalist for like someone of like peripheries caliber. Oh shit! Well, thank you. I don't even think <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even trying to oversell my boy. Just fucking go listen to this record. Go back listen to Zelophilia. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm putting out the, the the casting call for you if you're interested. Like, someone should be someone should be picking you up and taking you into a, a bigger band. Well, th- thank you, Twister. I, I'm, I'm honored. I, oh, yeah. I, really did I was definitely feeling uh, uh, a little like uh, belittled uh, when I was coming into this podcast because I have <laughs> Christian. He's got a great radio voice. And then I was like, oh, this motherfucker coming in with even a lower voice. Oh, great, everybody. Wait till, like, <laughs> wait till Luke starts correcting your grammar. Yeah, exactly. If you say you're and you're, I'm going to fucking... Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just... Um, I, I, it's, uh, it's such a great uh, experience. Yes, especially... Uh, <laughs> This podcast is done. We're fucking done. 
Uh, but yo, uh, 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 Luke, um, do you like? Do you go by Lou to like push that, or are you Luke to everybody? Like that kind of thing. Like, do you Levi? I think just means you're like your day to day. Yeah, your day to day, or like, or if you're promoting yourself, is, is that your business card? Do you like? Oh, I'm. Yeah, Luke should Kelly, I be referring to you as Lou? Kelly? Is that like your preferred? Yeah, your preferred title now? No, uh, that I I don't particularly care. I really don't. Um, <laughs> my day to day. I love when, you. <laughs> I don't, yeah, my day to day, I just go by Luke. I go by my my legal name. But when it comes to the, and it, which is a little weird when it, uh, when the very few times that I do any, uh, like the, if I have, am graced with the honor of being on the Math Cat Math Core Index podcast, I do do I go like, yes, my my name is Lou Kelly. This is I'm going by my moniker now because that's the professional thing that to shit, do. Baby. So, so yeah, it's a uh, anyway the. To reiterate, day by day, legal name. Um, when I'm trying to promote something and get something, someone to buy something for me, Lou. Duly noted. Okay, okay. I will. Uh, I will take that into consideration when I'm titling this podcast. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, you you sort of skirted my question though. Do you have any? Or Levi maybe cut me off and sort of put mm-hmm. us on a, a that, different tangent. That. Do you have any uh, intention of like getting out and like gigging with another band anytime oh, soon? Oh, sorry. Um. At the immediate moment, no. I think the closest thing to gigging with a band is really uh, the world is quiet here. Even though I just answered earlier that we, whether gigs are ever going to come up, that's uh, that remains to be seen. Um, but at the immediate moment, no. I don't. I don't foresee myself gigging with any bands anytime soon, and especially since I'm trying to get used to this new day job, which is taking a lot of my time and energy right at the moment. New day jobs will do that to you. Mm-hmm. But, well, I think that I'm pretty much fresh out of questions here but um it's it's so good to fucking have you uh, on the podcast again finally like just such a long time coming yeah. and um yeah man just again we've said it so many times but just a really uh, a, a personal fan of your work i'm honored to have collaborated with you on the past as well oh, look, boys. You know. and, uh, Trip, you're part of anarchica i always forget about that <laughs> yeah we should honestly collaborate on some stuff in the future too absolutely no. i'm looking forward i to know it. i I didn't use your drum tracks from the Waking Grave song, but uh, <laughs> if you can forgive me for that one, that one slight, then perhaps we can we can forge ahead a, a new project. Oh, that's that's fine with me. I, I would love that. And uh, and Christian, oh, man, I, I love that too. I, I was going to say on another note. I know this is I know this is going to be recorded for the podcast, but uh, as a personal note, Krishna, I I really appreciate your, you willing to be friends with me over the years, and um, I oh, know man. it's. It's just, yeah, of course. And so I really appreciate all, all your support and just just the good energy you're putting out into the world and, and also just keeping you and Levi keeping the Math Core Index rolling. Yeah, I'm really proud of how you guys uh, cultivated this and turned it into the, the the juggernaut that it is today. And <laughs> juggernaut, I like that. <laughs> Dude, it, it, it really is. I mean, Christian's like ma- most of the most of Mathcore Index. I mean, I do just I, I talk on this podcast, man. But yeah, this motherfucker over here, he, he understands social media and he fucking his brain digests it well. I, I don't understand how he does it, man. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. I really appreciate that. But um, but uh, right but again, you. but but again, I I truly appreciate your friendship and and just. Thank, thank you for being with me all the years. Hell yeah, man! You as well. Fucking, it's it's been a, it's been a long, strange trip, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, uh, keep keep producing, uh, keep making better and better music as you've been doing. And we'll be good. Yeah, you should you should absolutely be. Uh, don't don't stop. You're you're getting pretty good if you just keep practicing. <laughs> if you just keep practicing. <laughs> You you can pick up some, but yeah, you 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 might get signed by Dark Trail Records. <laughs> yeah, but you you keep playing your cards right. You might be on the the biggest label in the top one hundred band label bands you've never heard of. Just like this podcast, we appeal to the tens of hundreds. Man, you are on your way, Luke. You know, Dark Trail is like a lily pad label. It's like what you you get signed to when you're trying to actually get signed yeah. to good fight music. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, uh, but uh, but Luke, uh, you fucking uh, this is amazing, man. This is, thank you for um, dealing with our uh, audio things in the beginning. And thank you for dealing with our shenanigans yeah. and letting us steamroll you for the first like four bands. Yeah, we still have to yell at you and steamroll you. Is what we do. I like to think that you are just enchanted because you normally are listening to the podcast and not a part of it. <laughs> I, I I was enchanted. You got got me. <laughs> All right, well, Luke, is there anything else that you would like to to plug here? Any any other upcoming projects? Um, any other creative endeavors? We'd love to hear about it. 
Oh, thank you. Um, nothing to note yet. Um, hopefully we'll get back to doing some music soon. So instead, in the meantime, I will just double down and, and back the amazing Zon album that the boys had out the quiet. The world, the quiet. The world is quiet here. <laughs> Air horn noises. Yeah. So they, they, really yeah. produce, they really put together something amazing. I, I'm very proud that they allowed me to be a part of it. So Fucking A, man. You should be, you should be very proud. It's, it's massive. It's, That's a notch on the belt for sure, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It Thank is you. a progressive metal opus for sure. Like, yeah. Thank you. You should be proud. I cool, am. man. Well, I guess, I guess we're, we're about done here. Mm-hmm.